Everybody and welcome to the Canadian Grand Prix, one of my favourite races on the Formula One calendar. It is round number eight of the 2023 campaign. Finally back here again, and it looks to be another legendary weekend. Rain in the air as well. Expected heights in practice two, qualifying, and now a 60% chance for the race itself. Let's take a look then at what happened in the press conference and catch up with all the news from the drivers. Welcome everybody to the drivers press conference ahead of the FIA Formula One Canadian Grand Prix. We have two groups coming your way and we have group one. Uh, with us now, closest to me, Oscar Piastri, then Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Alex Albon and Valtteri Bottas. A very warm welcome to you all. Uh, Oscar, why don't we start with you uh, this time? Let's throw it back to Spain, first of all. Uh, you said on the Sunday night that it had been a dose of reality for the team. After a competitive Saturday, do you now understand why you struggled so much in the race? Um, yeah, I think so. I think even before the race happened um, or you know at, at the race we we knew what our limitations were going to be um, and yeah Sunday proved to be uh, correct in what we thought would happen so um, yeah I think we're you know we understand where we need to work um, and, and where we need to improve and now it's just about delivering on that. Now talking of work you have been busy since that race uh, testing in Hungary last week how was that? Uh, it was nice uh, another day in an F1 car is always a good day. And, and how different did it feel in an F1 car compared to an F2 car? Uh, well, I, ha I haven't been to Budapest in an F2 car either. So uh, it had been a while since I'd been there. But um, no, cool track in an F1 car especially. Um, a lot of high-speed corners to, to really uh, you know, feel the, the limits of an F1 car. So yeah, it was a fun day out. Look, bring it on to this weekend then. Um, your first Canadian Grand Prix. It's a tricky track, this one. Tell us about the preparations on the sim. Um, yeah, I think pretty normal to be honest. Um, nothing too much more. I've I've played uh, the track when I was growing up on all the F1 video games. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Looks cool. Looks quite bumpy and, and a bit dusty, um, and obviously a lot of weather hanging around. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But I'm looking forward to getting out there. Final one from me uh, for cricket fans out there. The Ashes start tomorrow in the UK. Uh, England against Australia. Very quickly. Looking forward to having a good beating by the by the Poms. I was going to say the exact same thing back. <laughs> um, no, looking forward to it. it should be good. Um, I'll try and watch it where I can. Obviously, um, it's a bit of a shame all the F1 races clash with all the games. But um, no, I'm looking forward to seeing Australia smash you guys. Ah, it's going to be good. And good luck this weekend. Thank you, Charles. Coming to you now. Before we talk Formula One, can we just throw it back to last weekend? Uh, you were at Le Mans for a historic victory for Ferrari at uh, the 24 hours. Just tell us about the weekend and whether you ever see yourself driving in that race. I've said it many times now. Um, I think it's an incredible race, and and of course I would love to participate one day. Um, I don't know when, but uh, but I would love to. Um, it was incredible. Uh, it was the first time for me uh, attending the, the race. Uh, obviously, it couldn't end up better with uh, with a Ferrari winning. Um, but the, just the whole event is is crazy. Um, by night, the first six hours were crazy with the weather too and rain, no rain. So it was very very exciting. And uh, I I think the last time I went to see a race as a spectator was a very very long time ago too. So uh, it was uh, it was good. Did you stay up all night? Until 4.30 in the morning, uh, I slept like four hours, so it was okay. Wow, that's commitment. Fernando, do you think he should do it? Yes, why not? <laughs> He'd be good. Um, look, let's bring it back to Formula One. Um, 
what can we expect from you and Ferrari this weekend? Because you're coming off the back of a difficult weekend in Spain. Yeah, it was a it was a very difficult uh, di very difficult weekend for for me especially. Um, on this track, we don't have anything new, so I, I don't think we'll uh, have any miracles. But we need to just try and uh, up maximize our package, understand more this package, the way it uh, should set up the car in order to maximize it. As in uh, Spain, we were quite easily off the, the window and then we're losing quite a lot of performance. So we've learned a lot um, and I'm pretty sure we'll be in a better place for, for this weekend, but I, I don't think it will be um, um, yeah, a huge step forward. When you got the car back to Maranello, did you discover a problem from Saturday? No, 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 we, we didn't. No issue, okay. Um, what about this weekend then? Uh, a great race last year from the back to fifth. Um, I know you've got nothing new, but what are you hoping for? Well, uh, last year we were in a very different uh, situation. And uh, yeah, again, I think... Uh, we expect Aston Martin to be very strong this, this weekend. Uh, we expect Red Bull to be very strong this weekend. We struggle to understand exactly where Mercedes will be compared to us. Um, but again, we have to focus on ourselves, try to maximize our package. It's a very challenging track with the weather also. We don't really know which side it's uh, is going to go. So um, um, yeah, we'll just focus on ourselves and see what we can do. All right, best of luck. Thank you, Sean. Fernando, coming to you now. Uh, so Ferrari think Aston Martin are going to be strong this weekend. What do you think? Let's see. I think um, it should be it should be a good weekend. Uh, but uh, you never know until you hit the track. We also um, had expectations in Barcelona, and we didn't perform uh, on that race. So yeah, let's see. We have a couple of new parts in the car as well uh, on, on this race. So. Uh, depending on the weather, we will try to, to test them and validate them and, and yeah, hopefully we can, we can be a little bit more competitive than Barcelona. What are you expecting from the upgrades? Always trying to, yeah, to improve a little bit. Uh, our car has been um, a completely new project for Aston Martin, a completely new philosophy, new concept of uh, how the car worked and, um, and yeah, we, we've been discovering things on, on every race this year and uh, I think it's an uh, optimization of, of the package what we we try to, to do um, and we've been yeah uh, constantly uh, bringing new parts to the to the races uh, this is uh, another step forward uh, and, and more to come in the future. Lawrence Stroll said this week that he'd like to see both of his cars on the podium here how likely is that? <laughs> you never know but uh, um, it is a, um, yeah, an, an aggressive target uh, for the weekend, but uh, we know Lawrence. You know uh, the ambition of of uh, of, um, of him is yeah um, super high always, and uh, we will try to make him happy and, and proud in in the home Grand Prix. Fernando, you've won this race before. You started on the front row last year. What is the secret of success here at the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve? I think you need to have obviously confidence in the car. It's a semi-street circuit, so you you get very close to the walls, and uh, and you need to ride the curbs as well. Very aggressive, um, very bumpy circuit. Uh, weather normally plays a big factor here, as it will do again this weekend. And uh, yeah, get some some experience is always good. Uh, it's the 17th or 18th Canadian Grand Prix, so it's always help. All right, best of luck. Thank you, Fernando. Alex, coming to you now, welcome. Now, you said in Spain that the Barcelona track layout left Williams exposed. What do you think about this weekend? Um, I, I kind of like these kind of circuits. I do feel there's a little bit more in terms of, um, you know, the ride, uh, maybe not so much just pure downforce on the car. There's, there's a bit more to it, weather, um, so, We've got some upgrades coming this weekend. Hopefully, in some ways, we want it to be dry just to see see what they do. Um, but as I said, it, it does seem like a, a bit more of a characterful track than, than Barcelona. What are you expecting from the upgrades? Have you driven them on the simulator? Yeah, we've, we've um, been pretty hard at work the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, nothing nothing too big, actually, balance-wise. It feels quite similar. It's more just a, a general uh, downforce difference. So. Um, 
Yeah, I think it's, you know, we've done a good job. I, I do think it's going to put us more into the fight with the midfield, um, something which we've been falling away a little bit from the last few races. So hopefully it can just get us um, back into the fighting fighting area for points. All right, best of luck with that. Thank you, Alex. And Valtteri, thank you for waiting. Before we talk on track, uh, a question regarding off track, because James Key um, is going to be joining Alfa Romeo as technical director in September. Uh, can we get your reaction to that news, please? I think James is obviously very, very welcome to the, to the team. He's got lots of experience from um, different teams before, been in different situations. So, yeah, I think he's going to be a good addition for, for us. And, um, yeah, looking forward to uh, starting, starting to work with him. And in terms of facilities, does as, does Alfa Romeo slash Sauber have everything it needs in Hinville? Is it just a question of brain power now? The the basic things are there. Uh, there's always room for improvements, and you could always get the latest latest machinery for every single department. So I think there's still work going on, um, seeing where where to invest, when to invest, um, because there is a clear long term plan. Um, but then in the end, it's also about human power, like you said. So. Mm. We're getting there step by step, but uh, it is a project. All right. And what can we expect from you and Alfa Romeo this weekend? Uh, you have four podiums at this track. Great drive to P7 as well last year. What about 2023? Hopefully points. I think that's it is a realistic target. We had a car in, in Barcelona to be in top 10. So um, let's see how we go here. Very different track, but uh, we try the best and we're here to fight for points. All right, best of luck with that. Thank you. Let's open this to the floor. First question, please. Name and publication. Uh, David Croft, Sky Sports F1. It's a question to you, Charles. I could see the disappointment on your face when you uh, told Tom that you couldn't find a cause for the issues on Saturday in Barcelona. If only you could run in Baku every single week, your season would be a lot better than it, than it has been. How worried are you? about Ferrari's form, uh, about the way the season is progressing and the fact that you couldn't find an issue to something that was clearly a problem for you on Saturday in Spain? I mean, overall, I, I think all the team is not satisfied with the performance we are showing at the moment on track and it's very far off our expectations at the beginning of the season and, and this, um, yes, we are very clear with ourselves and it's very clear for us. Then qualifying in Barcelona was a very particular one. I think um, I wasn't the only one to, to struggle. Then uh, we need to understand uh, these things and for now we don't have the reason. So this is a little bit more worrying and, and that's where we need to um, push and try to, to understand the reason of it because obviously the feeling was uh, really, really bad. Um, but yeah, and then looking ahead, uh, we just need to, to keep pushing, try and bring up grades as quickly as possible and regularly, uh, which is our aim now, to try and close the gap with the guys, uh, with the guys in front and, um, and also close the gap, especially in, in terms of race pace, because even though I had a, I struggled a lot in qualifying on the Saturday, the Sunday wasn't, wasn't great either. And um, if we look, Carlos, that had a great weekend, he had a great Saturday, but then in Sunday, we, we, we struggled again with the race pace. So that's where we are trying to, uh, uh, to push at the moment. Um, what gives me confidence though is that there's a clear direction in where we want to work and improve and uh, this is what uh, makes me believe in, in the project. Welcome back to Montreal everybody for part two of our driver's press conference and closest to me Sergio Perez then we have Pierre Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda, Kevin Magnussen and Lewis Hamilton. Very warm welcome to you all. Everyone busy catching up. Um, Lewis, why don't we start with you, if we could. Um, seven wins here in Canada. You have a phenomenal record. And of course, one of those wins was your first one in Formula One back in 2007. What is it about this place? Um, good afternoon, everyone. I don't know. I think it's, um, it's a, one of the driver's favorite circuits, I think, for sure. It's, it's the city, it's the energy. It's, um, I was asking, one of the um, Canadians recently, like, is the city the same when we're not here? But the energy is always great. Got a great, an amazing crowd since the beginning. Um, and the track is like, you've got these long, long straights, but it's a bit like a go-kart track in some, in, in, you know, how you have to throw the car over the, over the curbs. And um, it's just, yeah, it's always dwelled well with me. It's big, big braking circuit. So that's been always my strength since I was younger. I was just going to say, does it suit your style? Clearly. 
Yeah, <laughs> clearly the record speaks for itself. Yeah. Look, and how much confidence do you have coming into this weekend after what was a really encouraging race in in Spain? Yeah, uh, definitely a lot that we've just we've been making progress, and and the car last race was just we've all been buzzing. I think back at the factory, the whole team has this new energy and um, kind of feel like we've got kind of a um, a north star. We know where we're going. We know we how to get there, so everyone's just churning away and working as hard as possible. So excited coming here. I'm hoping that we generally don't know whether this track suits our car and the car's characteristics, but um, the weather may change that and we'll see. Are you doing a rain dance? Um, I don't think I need to. <laughs> This class <laughs> a pretty good thing outside. Yeah, so. You've seen the forecast. Look, uh, Lewis, final one from me. You did say in Barcelona that you were hoping to uh, hook up with Toto Wolf after the race to talk about uh, your future with the team. Uh, yeah, we've never you, hooked up. Before. You didn't hook up? No, we've never hooked up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. But did you, <laughs> did you have a meeting? You yeah. normally do it over pizza, right? <laughs> uh, no, we never have pizza. <laughs> no, but... um. Yeah, I just, I've seen Toto, um, we've talked several times, and so we have a great relationship, so, um, but there's nothing else to say at the moment. Any progress made? Yeah, okay. but nothing else new to really add to it. Okay, brilliant. Lewis, best of luck this weekend, thank you. Uh, Kevin, let's come to you next. Uh, your 150th race in Formula One, what a ride it's been for you. Just how do you reflect on the last 10 years? Yeah, I mean, it always, when you, uh, you know, when you think back, it feels like, uh, you know, 150 races, it, it sounds like a lot, but it actually, it doesn't feel like that much. You know, I always get surprised when new guys come into F1 and I, uh, and I see their age, you know, and I, and I look, I think about my old age, my own age and suddenly feel quite old. You know, I actually, I feel young still, but, uh, you know, time flies and uh, I'm not, I'm not a youngster anymore. So, 30. You're 30? I'm 30. So uh, is that, were you surprised that I wasn't older? Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's the beard. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I look old. People say I look older than my dad. I've seen that on, on, the, <laughs> on the internet. But um, no, it's, it's, it's been a, a really fun ride. And, you know, it, it doesn't feel like it's, it's uh, anywhere near over yet. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be around still and excited for the future. Well, tell us about Spain next. It wasn't an easy race for either you or, or your teammate. What have you learned since that race that's going to help you this weekend? Yeah, it was a tricky one because it was so up and down. You know, uh, one session we were close to top five. The next one we were, you know, like out of Q1 range. And uh, it was going up and down so much that it was, you know, we made small changes to the car that we didn't think was going to be big and it had a very big effect. So it was a little bit of a confusing weekend um, and you know it obviously ended up not being a great one in, in the race too with you know a lot of um, tire wear and degradation so uh, hoping you know that we can find some ans some actual an answers that we can carry forward and uh, avoid you know falling into the same same trap. Uh, Nico has also said this week that he thinks the team needs to focus on Sundays not Saturdays do you agree with him? Yeah, I do agree. I mean, it, at the end of the day, Sundays are the most, you know, important. If you have a fast car on, on Saturday, it doesn't doesn't really matter if you're really wearing out the tires or just not fast on Sunday. So that that is clearly the priority to to find the the pace on Sunday. It, it has been good in, you know, in, in in races this year, but it's been a little bit up and down, too much up and down. And um, yeah, that's that's clearly what we need to work on. And do you think this racetrack will suit your driving style a bit like it does Lewis's? Well, I don't know about that but i mean um, we have been struggling a little bit when it's been bumpy and you know this this track is a, is a bumpy one and you're also you know using the curbs and in all the chicanes and i, I don't know if that's going to suit us uh, that well but we, you often get surprised anyway and and we'll see all right best of luck thank, thank you, you kevin yuki coming to you now um, you were upset after the race in spain following the incident with Joe Guan Yu. Um, what did you learn as a result of what happened on track there? And will you do anything differently going forward in terms of your wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing? I'm still upset with it, but um, yeah, I mean, you cannot change anything. And um, yeah, I mean, in the end, uh, that's the, what uh, FIA decided. And actually uh, we spoke 
um, this afternoon probably with the FI, FI and they understand their pers perspective and um, yeah, other than that, nothing to re nothing to say. I won't I won't change any approach. I would say to be honest. Um, in the end, I try as much as possible to defend it, and um, in within the you know within the limit. I thought it's uh, in the limit, but it was not. So, but in the end, um, if you think too much, you know, like you cannot defend. So, well, obviously, I tried to, you know, change a little bit better, probably better. You know, little, uh, there's a room that I can improve, obviously, uh, in any situation. So, and I have a couple of minds, but yeah, I feel at the same time still quite similar um, mindset after after the race that I felt quite harsh. But um, in, a, in the end, what it, it is what it is. And yeah, um, I just have to accept it, yeah. Okay, well look, what about this weekend? Give us your thoughts on the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve. I've read that you compared it to Suzuka, and I think that's an interesting comparison. Tell us more. I compared this track to Suzuka. That's what I read, yes. In in your race preview, if it's you not really the, want to know it's not similar it. at all. Huh? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, maybe were you thinking in terms of how it punishes mistakes? Ah, uh, yeah, that okay. Suzuka um, does. Is that is that maybe what you were thinking? Well, Suzuka, we don't drive a curb, and here we drive a curb, and it's straight circuit here. It's not straight circuit in Suzuka, so yeah, probably I don't know. I was, uh, I was, I was not, I was not in a good mood when I said that or whatever. But um, um, yeah, I mean, it's in terms of probably like uh, there's a gra 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 grass, L O R. I don't know which was it. Gra glass, grass, a uh, grass, grass next to the next to the track surface is uh, quite similar to Suzuka. So it's challenging. It's still thrilling, and you know, um, once you step out, it's uh, it's quite costly, but. Yeah, if you if you compare to the guys, it's not similar at all. So it's hard to say more than this one. But I try to maximize the lap time within the grass. And and you could, are you confident that you can get back into the points? There's been three races now that you've yeah. been outside. Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, especially race pace, we've been a positive uh, consistently this year. So I try to maximize that. And well, one of the probably now limitation is uh, qualifying. Try to you know. Um, extract as much as possible, be high, ended up high position as much as possible to um, to be slightly easier than uh, starting P15 or whatever. Um, that's our probably main challenging for this week. And um, I'm feeling positive. I think so far bumpy track is not too bad. Monaco, we, we performed quite well, so i um, feeling optimistic. But yeah, um, I try my best. I, I think this weather will be a um, slightly game change you know, or affect our kind of strategy and a uh, um, bit of pace. So see how it goes. All right. Best of luck. Thank you, Yuki. Pierre, coming to you now. Now, you've been busy away from the racetrack since we last saw you in Spain. You took in the tennis in Paris. You've been bowling here in Montreal. Just tell us a bit more. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was quite nice to just have like a, a weekend to, to recharge back home and I mean, I'm quite quite a sport enthusiast, so um, I must say I quite enjoyed between MotoGP, 24 Hours, Le Mans, I think Roland Garros, there was Champions League final. So um, no, I definitely definitely enjoyed watching a lot uh, and, and following all that. Um, and then yeah, we had a nice bowling event last last night with the team. So um, it was it was pretty fun to just catch up and, and bond with the team members outside the race track. Sounds fun. It was Djokovic. Did you watch? It? Yeah, yeah, Djokovic, and uh, yeah, it was just incredible. Um, just to to witness, you know, he won his twenty twenty uh, third Grand Slam, Grand Slam, um, and yeah, it was just impressive, just mentally and, and how strong his game um, was. So definitely, uh, definitely enjoyed it. Well, look, talking Formula One, um, can we throw it back to qualifying in Spain next? Because uh, you were given a sixth place grid penalty for impeding. Um, are you and your engineer going to approach qualifying any differently this weekend to avoid something like that happening again? Yeah, obviously. Um, I think it had a, a, a very bad impact, obviously, on our on our weekend, you know, from qualifying fourth to start P10 and uh, drop to, to P14 on lap one. So it was 
it was definitely um, a, a pretty pretty terrible start. But um, yeah, there are always things we can do better. There were small mistakes, which were done in quali, um, which we reviewed and and will improve in terms of uh, procedure and communication and. Uh, and yeah, it was harsh penalty. Unfortunately, there is a, a re regulation which uh, which is applied most of the time, and uh, and then yeah, we paid a, a pretty big price. Yeah. And do you think this circuit here in Montreal will suit your car? I think the last three events have been pretty strong in terms of evolutions and and progress. We've scored points with with both cars on these last three events. Um, Miami was a step forward. Monaco, there was obviously a, a podium. Um, Barcelona, we showed strong pace in quali with a false, um, false in qualifying and, and again, double points. So there is definitely positives. Um, there is small details we need to, to work on to really make a step on Sundays. But um, overall, I think we got decent potential um, in our package and I'm confident we can uh, get a strong result again this weekend. Okay, best of luck. Chaco, coming to you now, after a difficult couple of races, uh, what is your mindset coming into this Canadian Grand Prix? Yeah, I basically want a, a restart, uh, go again. Basically, Monaco uh, was was held down to me. I had a really bad bad mistake, but uh, then in Barcelona, in the qualifying again, uh, it was tricky with the damp conditions. We didn't manage to, to have a good quali and then we pay the price on Sunday. So I think I, I'm looking forward to get back on, on the form we had in, in the early season. Is it difficult to get the car into the right window for you in qualifying? Is is that the cause of the problem? It was difficult in Barcelona. Um, it's the only time that I have uh, difficulties with the car. I, I did a struggle through the weekend, uh, so it was tricky in Barcelona, but other than that, than that uh, I think in, in Monaco we had the pace to to really have a very good weekend, but I I did a mistake, you know, I was caught out with, um, um, with the tailwind, with the car ahead and, and so on. So, no, I think it's a, the first time we had difficulties, it, it was in Barcelona. And Christian Horner has said that he thinks there's less pressure on you now. Do you agree with him? Well, I uh, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. I think we we always have to deliver to to our maximum, um, and we just have to to make sure we we deliver. We have a great car, and uh, we should be having a lot of uh, of uh, yeah podiums, wins, and and so on. You know, uh, from now till till the end of the year. So we can see that the competition is getting closer and closer all the time. But uh, we will try our best. And do you think you'll have the fastest car this weekend? Uh, it's a tricky, a tricky um, racetrack. I think it, what we've seen in Barcelona, things are getting closer, and, and certainly there's always one, two teams that uh, can get really close. So, and especially with with how the the weekend is looking, it's looking really damp. So it, it will only get things a little bit closer. All right. Thank you, Chaco. Let's open this to the floor now. Name and publication, please. Uh, David Croft, Sky Sports uh, F1. Uh, Checo, let's, let's carry on talking to you. Um, you. You're no rookie. You've been around for a while now, but I'm told week after week you never stop learning uh, in life. And this, I think it's 50 races now this weekend for, for Red Bull, 50 races as a teammate to Max. So, so what have you learned from him as a driver that you can use to help you in, in what you say is now a reset for the rest of the season? What, what has he done that you think, right, I need to do that? to get more out of this? Well, I think he, he's been able to deliver uh, when he met her uh, in qualifying, and he hasn't had a bad weekends at all this year. And I think it's what I need, you know. I, I cannot afford to have any any bad weekends uh, anymore. I think I've had uh, two or three bad weekends in, in the season, so I really have to get rid of those and, and, and keep the consistency high because I think it's something that that Max has been um, really good and consistent throughout the, this period. We'll be back then for practice one following this show shortly as well. And hopefully all the action is going to be absolutely fantastic. Join us for the Canadian Grand Prix live this weekend.